This is the teacher's recording of Unit 1, Economics. In this unit, we will try to attain the following unit assessment objectives. Students will be able to explain why scarcity and choice are the basis of economics in every society, describe the three economic factors of production and the differences between physical and human capital, Three is identifying why every decision involves trade-offs, which leads further into the topic that students should be able to explain, which is the concept of opportunity cost. So, lesson one, scarcity. I encourage you to pause the video and to read the content of each slide before tuning back into the uh, before playing the video again, so you can hear my audio presentation, which will be much more expansive and wider in scope in terms of describing and clarifying the material in every lesson. So if you'd like to pause now, read and then continue. So scarcity, people always have to make decisions about how to meet their needs and wants. A need is something people must have to survive, like air, food, and shelter. A want is something that people would like to have, but is not necessary for survival. Economics is the study of how people choose from limited resources to meet their needs and wants. People have to make such choices because of scarcity, the limited amounts of resources to meet unlimited desires. Again, limited amounts of resources to meet unlimited desires. Goods are objects like cars and clothes. Services are actions that other people do for others, such as teaching. A shortage is something that occurs when a good or service is unavailable. Shortages occur when people have trouble supplying goods and services at current prices. They may occur because of situations like war, or drought. They may end quickly or may last a long time. Economists uh, call the resources used to make goods and services factors of production. So factors of production are the resources used to make goods and services. They are of three types, land, labor, and capital. Land includes natural resources like coal, water, and forests. Labor is work for which people receive pay. Capital is a human-made resource used to produce other goods and services. Objects made by people, like buildings and tools, are called physical capital. They are tangible items. Human capital refers to the knowledge and skills people gain from study and experience. Entrepreneurs are people who put together land, labor, and capital to create new businesses. So on to the next lesson, lesson two, opportunity cost and trade-offs. When making decisions, people face trade-offs or alternatives we give up when we choose one course of action over another. Individuals, businesses, and governments all face trade-offs. A person who chooses to spend more time at work has less time to spend at home. A business that uses all of its factories to build chairs cannot build tables at the same time. A country that decides to produce more military goods has fewer resources to use for consumer goods. A person who chooses one alternative gives up other alternatives. The most desirable alternative given up is called the opportunity cost. The most desirable alternative given up is called the opportunity cost. For example, suppose you have to choose between sleeping late or getting up early to study for a test. The opportunity cost of extra study time is less sleep. The opportunity cost of more sleep is less study time. Now, decisions also involve 
a term, a concept called thinking at the margin. This means deciding about adding or subtracting one unit of a resource, such as one hour of sleep, in, in order to gain an advantage. In the example above, the decision was between sleeping late or studying. But you could also choose to sleep an hour late, then wake up to study. To make a decision at the margin, you would compare the opportunity cost and benefit of each extra hour of studying. The benefit of adding one more unit of anything, such as one more hour of studying, is called the marginal benefit. The cost of adding one more unit of anything is called marginal cost. So we have two types of marginal terms here. One is benefit, one is cost. The process of making decisions based on costs and benefits is called a cost-benefit analysis, which you may have heard of prior to this course. And now to the final lesson of this unit, lesson three, production possibility curves. Now, economists use, use graphs called uh, production possibilities curves to show alternative ways of using a country's resources. For example, an, econ an economist might want to examine the production of shoes and watermelons. A production possibilities curve can show how the number of shoes produced is affected by the number of watermelons grown. As the number of watermelons produced is increased, the number of shoes produced will decrease. This happens because land is scarce, as we said in uh, lesson one. And more land for watermelon farms means less land for shoe factories. Similarly, as more shoes are produced, fewer resources are available to grow watermelons. Efficiency is a key term here. Mean, it means an economy is using resources in such a way as to maximize the production of goods and services. In the prior example, efficiency would, meet that, would mean that most watermelons and shoes possible are being produced. The line on the curve that shows the maximum possible production is called the production possibilities frontier. If factory workers and farmers lost their jobs, fewer shoes and watermelons would be produced. In this case, the economy would suffer from underutilization or using fewer resources than it is capable of using. A country's resources are, of course, always changing. So, this was a brief coverage of the first three lessons and of the unit and what we can expect out of the unit. I'd be happy uh, for you to contact me through school's email and in person during class as we explore these subjects in depth. Thank you.